We're back out here at the Big Lake once again, and today we're talking about the lures and presentations that really saved my day out on the water today. We'll go over why they work so well and how you can apply it to your fishing. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Got him. Oh, I got him. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And even here in South Mississippi, things have gotten chilly. We've been down in the 40s for several nights in a row now, maybe even a week or longer. And those bass have noticed and they don't like it. For us, that is absurdly cold. Usually we're not that low as far as temperature wise until about the middle of December. You know, our nights just don't get that cold. And even still, it won't last long. Usually by New Year's, New Year's Eve, you can have temperatures in 85, 90 degrees during the day and down in the 70s at night. So having temperatures this early, this cold, has really messed up the fishing. But fortunately, there is a method, there is a process that I use that can really salvage these types of days on the water. You know, most of the time we talk about the fall transition, we talk about following those bass along their traditional migration routes, don't we? You know, we talk about following them around as they stop from spot to spot and being able to pick apart those places and catch fish, and those places will repopulate. Well, it's not that you know, we can throw that out the window, but while these colder temperatures are here, we're basically gonna have to put that mentality on the back burner just a little bit, but not all of it, you know, we'll get into why. You know, there's still some parts of it that we can use, some of it that we can salvage and make some usage of. But as we've talked about in some of the previous videos, those bass are looking for some place warm. They want some place warm to set up on where they can have that warmth because they're cold blooded, right? They get their heat from their surrounding environment. And the warmer the water, well, the warmer they are and the more active they are. And usually the more willing they are to bite. At least a faster presentation, a moving bait, something like that. But when they get cold, they just shut right down, don't they? But there are some things that we can do to alleviate that problem. And we're going to go over it. You know, we've talked about fishing the sunny side of the bank. Well, what does that mean? Well, for us in the Northern Hemisphere, it means fishing the north side. But there are some caveats that go along with that, and we'll explain that. For example, you know, let's say that on the western bank, on the western shore, there's a rock pile. Well, we don't want to fish that right off the bat. Why? Because in the morning, the sun is going to be on the northern bank, and it's going to be on the western bank. So that trumps that rock pile. You're going to have to wait until the sun comes all the way up and starts hitting that rock pile. And then as it warms up as the day goes on, those fish will be more attracted to it and that's where they will group up. But you know, they will move from warm area to warm area and fish will use what they have available. So we have to do it in the right order. Remember, north bank trumps all because that's what's going to get the most amount of sun during the day. If you have laydowns, if you have rock piles, if you have grass, if you have shallow flats that are dark or whatever, you have gravel, you know, a gravel bottom, something like that that's shallow, that's going to trump anything else because that's going to be in the sun the longest. So focus on that, on that northern bank. Now, if you've got a good rock pile on an eastern bank and a western bank, well, we can work those in, but in the right order, right? In the morning time, that eastern bank is going to be in the shade. That's going to be a no-go for the most part. And that western bank, well, as that sun comes up, that's going to be the first rays. It's going to get that early warmth, and that's probably where I'm going to target most. As a matter of fact, that's where I'm looking for whenever I start fishing, is I'm starting in the northwest corner because that's going to be the first areas that start to get those rays of sun and that's going to be the area of the lake that warms up first and the quickest so that's going to be an area that those fish are going to migrate to we need to keep that in mind 
And as that sun comes through the sky, remember, we've talked about this before. Be mindful of sun position during the day. It is so vital. It is so important. I cannot stress it enough because in the summertime, we talked about it as far as shade lines, right? As those shade lines go throughout the day. Now we're talking about sun as those sunspots go through the day. Patches that are, you know, you've got a big, thick area of hydrilla, right? And there's a big hole in the middle of it. Well, it's got sun that goes down in there where well, you've got to be able to track that sun so you know where to pitch your bait during the day. It's the little things like that, especially now. Those are the things that make all the difference in the world. And when I'm working those types of places, well, I'm actually keeping it very, very simple. We talked about this guy quite a bit. We've just got a weightless soft plastic jerk bait. And this guy today, this guy saved my bacon. You know, if it wasn't for this bait, things would have been a lot more rough than they ordinarily would have been because the only warmth, the only area that was really heating up on the north side of the lake this morning were log piles, you know, and they were covered with hydrilla all the way around. So I needed something like this to be able to get in there. At first I said, well, I'm gonna work it with a, a frog or a, a wacky rig, but neither one of those I could get to where I wanted to work. I couldn't work it the way I wanted to work it. This, this got in there, it targeted the area so well, I was able to pick it apart and I could do it slowly. And more importantly, I could do it quietly because a lot of times we'll go in there with a bunch of Radley baits, you know, hard jerk baits, chatter baits, lipless cranks or whatever. And we'll make a bunch of noise. You might catch one or two fish, but then you've scared all the other fish. They know you're there in a hundred yard radius and you've got to let the water rest before you can do anything, you know, before you can do any more fishing. The beauty of this is, well, it's natural. I can make as many casts with this as I want to and not have to worry about burning those fish out. They're not going to get um, accustomed to this, as it were. They're not going to get spooked by this. Got him. Oh, I got him. Oh, I found the snot out of him too. No, I didn't. On um, the fluke. Got him right in the top of the lip. He swam after it. Boy, that fish is cold. They're right where we thought it was going to be. Fishing the old weightless fluke right here in the sun drenched area. But even in South Mississippi, these fish are cold. Come on now. There we go. I'm not trying to mess up your lip anymore than I already did there, son. All right. Thank you, little buddy. And as the day wore on and I was able to work some different areas as they were more exposed to the sun, they began to warm up. That's when I picked up this guy and I started picking those areas apart. And again, you have to be slow. You've got to be careful. You can't make a bunch of noise. Those fish are not only lethargic, but they're also very skittish. So the slightest thing can spook them and they'll get locked jaw and you're just going to have to move on. You know, you put in all that work to locate the fish and then you make a bunch of noise. You make, make a bunch of ruckus and you turn them off. Don't do that. Go in there nice and stealthy with this. You know those fish are in there. You see that rock pile. You see that lay down baking in the sun. It's nice and shallow or whatever. It's in a perfect prime spot. Go in there with something like this or that weightless fluke and let it do its thing. Have some patience. You will be rewarded. I promise you. So this guy right here, this is going to be one of the main tools that I'm picking up whenever I'm working um, a sunny piece of structure. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those sunny pieces of structure, Northern Bank, Western Bank, and then Eastern Bank in that order, right? And when we find those and we find those spots, we're going to pick them apart with something like a wacky rig. Now, if we're working something perhaps a little bit deeper, or perhaps it's 
been a little bit warmer and were afforded the chance to maybe make some noise, you know, something like this little chatterbait. This is a little quarter ounce chatterbait. I've got a little Zoom Super Fluke Junior as the trailer. You know, I've talked about this. I beat this horse into the ground. You guys know that I'd much prefer something like, you know, a Fluke or a Spunk Shad or something like that as my trailer on a bladed jig, a chatterbait, because it does not inhibit how this blade works and the action that it has in the water. But, you know, when I can pull this out, and there are situations that I can work it, and I'm looking for those sunny situations, you know, when those bass have had a chance to warm up, when they've had a chance to maybe relax just a little bit. And I work this through there, and I'm doing it slowly at first. I'm slow rolling it, slow cranking it, you know, one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand of those turns of the crank, right? That's the cadence. That's what I'm talking to myself. And you know, a lot of times we can cover some water doing that. We can be real easy with it. Now, some guys, I've seen them bringing out silent square bills like a Fritz side or a old balsa bait like a Bagley or something like that. And those will work very well because they're, they're great for the cold water, especially the thinner body type ones, the ones that get that real tight wiggle. Cold water is essentially what they're made for. And right now is a great time. Now, I haven't really used them yet, but I probably will make that transition sooner rather than later. But this has been working well for me. And when I'm working spots, targeted spots, that fluke and that wacky rig, those have been money for me. I cannot get away from them because, well, today they just saved my fishing day. And that's all there is to it. So until they stop catching fish, I have no reason to put them down. And I have every reason to believe that they will continue to catch fish especially as this water and this weather just gets colder and colder. So there you have it. The methods that I'm using to find that warmer water and being able to still put myself on fish, even when that temperature gets absurdly and unseasonably cold. It's a technique that works well for me, and hopefully it's something I'll be able to rely on, and something you can rely on too, to keep putting fish in the boat until the weather warms back up. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.